uh, I'm here in Boulder, Colorado in our Humanities Team Studio. Uh, big shout out to you. Thank you for joining us. We're uh, coming on here just a few minutes late. We've got a special guest today, actually two. Uh, one is Michael Bernard Beckwith, whose birthday is just around the corner. He, uh, he has some technical difficulties. So we're gonna be bringing him on camera here in a moment. But uh, first we have another special guest here. Uh, Noah, uh, Tim, Tim uh, Noe, who goes by Noah, he's uh, my special guest as we get started. Hey, Noah, how are hey, you? Steve. Hey, it seems like I was just there with you on that couch. This is That's right. <laughs> nice to be on this couch. Man alive. Noah was my partner right here in Boulder for uh, eight months before he and his, uh, he's got three uh, cats that are part of family. And those uh, Noah and those cats are now in Oregon and uh, they're hanging, having a real good time up there at Karen Gordon's uh, property. So nice. Thanks for joining me here, Noah. I much appreciate it. Thank you for having me. I'm, in, I'm uh, enthused to be a preamble to Michael today with his birthday coming up and we have beautiful clips play, uh, picked out for him and his teachings, which I know you will yes, expand we, upon. Absolutely. Yeah, we have a fantastic program with Michael Bernard Beckwith. He's, uh, he was at Agape and he was going to come in live from Agape uh, his home is about two blocks away. His internet went down, so he's uh, driving over to his home. He'll be coming on shortly. But uh, I, I really appreciate you coming on here, Noah, with me as we get started. Uh, and let me just, uh, as we're shouting out to streamers, so people that are part of Humanities Stream Plus and Humanities.team, people on the Humanities Team Facebook uh, communities, the Sign Network, all of those, uh, uh, Facebook uh, uh, properties, and then Michael Bernard Beckwith's property, Agape, and his own uh, personal site. I think we're broadcasting to all of those sites. So big shout out to all of you. Thank you for being here with uh, us as we get started. Um, also, as we do each week, we're, uh, I can see your comments as you're, on, as you're there sharing on Facebook. So uh, any comments that you want to get to during the program, just put them in the chat and uh, Noah and I, and then later Michael and I will get to your comments here throughout the program, as many as we can. So a shout out to all of you. Thank you for being here with us. We appreciate it. And of course, uh, this program is brought to you by Humanities Team. We're a global nonprofit. Uh, our whole focus is on supporting people on their conscious journey, creating planetary awakening, and manifesting flourishing at every level of life. Uh, so we're, uh, we're, we're real glad to be here with you today. Noah, uh, I was thinking we could talk a little bit about this initiative that we've got going right now, focusing on conscious business worldwide, uh, which is an exciting program, isn't it? It sure is, Steve. I think uh, we'll need to pop out a bottle of kombucha, perhaps, to get this conversation rolling. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. So kombucha, something healthy. Yeah. So gosh, let me share here as Noah and I are kind of opening up this topic. When you Google, if you go and Google today, conscious business, go, go Google it. And then on your screen, you'll have, of course, you know, 10 or 12 things that'll open up on the first screen. There are multiple screens. But uh, what you're going to see is business that is, in fact, more healthy. Uh, it, uh, it's, it's business that is going in the direction of being more ethical, more moral. Uh, it brings in people, planet, profit. Instead of just shareholder, it's bringing in all of the stakeholders, which are, this, this is, a, these of course are huge positives in today's world. What it doesn't bring in, when we, you know, when we talk about conscious business, of course now we're talking about seeing the interconnection in all of life. So that we're not, when, when we don't see the interconnection, we can get uh, analytical, uh, and we can just become focused only on things like growing revenue and growing profit. Uh, there's no inner journey. There's no adjusting our being state. Um, there's no harmony between our interior and our exterior. And th this is what, of course, conscious living means. It's what, if we're going to talk about consciousness in the context of business, it's what conscious business is. So this is why Way back in 2015, Humanities Team reached out to the Club of Budapest in Europe, to the Goy Peace Foundation in Japan, and Case Western Reserve University here in the United States to create a conscious business 
declaration. And if you go to consciousbusinessdeclaration.org, you'll see this very uh, short declaration that was created back in 2015 among our four NGOs. We call ourselves the initiators of the Conscious Business Declaration. And, uh, and by the way, we invite you to sign it if you resonate with it. It talks about this whole interconnection in life, even oneness, right? There's a oneness, says uh, Michael uh, Beckwith likes to say, we're all emanations of the divine, right? So it brings in oneness, it brings in interconnection, it brings in the interior, all of these things. Now, humanities team then went one step further and created something called a conscious business change agent masterclass intensive. It's a six month program to train coaches, trainers, and entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs, or anybody that has a job in how to launch a conscious business or how to change a business so that it becomes conscious. And this is a campaign that's going on right now, uh, this Conscious Business Change Agent program. And if you go to our Humanities Team website, uh, and you'll see under the free programs, if you just scroll down, you'll see this whole program. It's an hour long program that we created with Ken Wilber, with Michael Beckwith, uh, and other many other leaders uh, who are all faculty in this Conscious Business Change Agent program. And they're talking about this uh, six month masterclass intensive. So, and it, uh, there's a free 60 minute program you can watch. Again, Michael is part of it, uh, Ken Wilber is part of it, where, where we all are talking about this whole framework of making business truly conscious. So, uh, Noah, it's, uh, it's an exciting program. All of us are, are enthused in humanities team about it. Uh, yes, and, and like you said, Steve, just to reiterate, Michael is part of the, fr the free program which you just put in name and email and you can watch. And he shares just a beautiful vision of business and how it operates and how uh, in the free series, Michael shares that rather than starting a business and then forming a mission, this whole concept of having a mission, being driven by a mission, by a calling and forming a business around here. And there's all these little golden, just gemstones, <laughs> golden nuggets and gemstones in this webinar just to make our own just to shift our own perspective of what business is and how we can interact and navigate these businesses in, in, a, in a way that's substantial, that we're shifting our paradigm and all that are all the all of those that surround us. Exactly. Yeah. And it's called take your place at the leading edge of business, conscious business practices that advance your reach and impact. It's this is the name of the series. It's running right now. And on the, I think we just put the web address there on the screen and just invite you to uh, check it out. Again, even if you just have a job and you're not a coach or trainer or consultant, entrepreneur or entrepreneur, I think you'll uh, find this uh, fascinating and, and interesting and important because, uh, and the reason we got into this back in 2015 as a nonprofit is uh, global business is the most important institution on the planet, right? It's not, it used to be the church some years ago Today, and Michael also shares, it's the most important institution on the planet. And so if we're driving toward this mission of creating a fully conscious humanity, a fully conscious planet, well, business needs to come in. We need to create a fully conscious business. So that's what this Conscious Business Change Agent program is about. And fortunately, in business, well, you always want to be out front. You don't, never want to be the laggard, right? You know, where you're, you're just kind of stuck in the old dinosaur things. <laughs> in, in business, you want to be out front with what's new. And this is, this is the big new emerging trend where we're conscious ourselves and where we create a culture within the organization that's conscious and we market in a conscious way. And there's so much more. There's, uh, there's a lot that's involved. Noah, what are, what are some of the things that are fascinating to you about... Uh, about the series? Oh, well, there's a lot. And I'd say that it's, it's, it's rooted in conscious business, but really it's applicable just in any sector, in the public sector, the nonprofit sector, just in family life in general. It's, it's, a, it's a way of perceiving just interaction and, and our relationship with people as we're, as we're working in a, in a professional way. So, uh, you know, working in team settings, for example, in the webinar, the free webinar, there's, there's just beautiful uh, tidbits 
of how to, sorry, this is my cat just wants to make an appearance. <laughs> um, but there's all these beautiful little uh, tidbits of how we can approach uh, team conversation and innovate and, and um, you know, improve our own uh, uh, or share our vision more fully. Uh, how we can cooperate, how business is not so much a competition, but a collaboration, a cooperation. And all of this is, is clearly applicable in a, uh, in a business setting, in a formal corporation, uh, of course. It's also applicable in, in an entrepreneuring endeavor. <laughs> this is Imasu. <laughs> and um, and in, in nonprofit, you know, we, we at Humanities Team, this is a nonprofit. But we take the learnings, clearly, Steve, uh, you with your business expertise and background and, and, uh, and insights, uh, contribute to the nonprofit in such a way which is very valuable to us. So, so Steve, I, I pose it back to you. How can this conscious business uh, program help people just in, in everyday life? And I do see that Reverend Michael may be with us now. Yeah, so. Reverend Michael is with us. Yeah, Noah, thank you for coming on as, uh, as our first special guest here today. <laughs> Gratitude, Noah, and uh, that was Peanuts, by the way, you saw on camera there. That's the mother cat. So big hugs to you and Peanuts, uh, Noah. Thanks for being with us. And we'll welcome uh, Reverend Michael on here. I think uh, thank we've you, got Steve. a solid hey. connection. Thank you. Thank you, hey, brother. Reverend. Yeah, thank you, Noah. Okay, fantastic. Thanks so much. And we'll bring in... Uh, Reverend Michael here. Uh, there he is. Hey, Reverend Michael, how are you? Happy birthday, man. <laughs> oh, no volume, Steve. All right. Yeah, yeah. We get to be one of the first to wish Michael a happy birthday. His birthday's next Wednesday, and he's got a big summit going on uh, around his birthday. I want to invite you to check it out. If you go to agapelive.com, agape live.com you'll be part of his birthday summit it's called uh end of the now celebration summit and say yes to you so that's that this year's theme say yes to you so hey that sounds like a great summit michael Proctor, Sadhguru, and a number of other individuals. So it's going to be a moment in which we are exploring the theme of saying yes to you. I mean, basically, you have to give permission to yourself. You're the only one that can give yourself permission to say yes to yourself. You can't, you can't ask permission from the world. You can't ask the world to bend itself toward you. You can't ask permission for, from other people, your parents, friends. Ultimately, you have to say yes. And when that yes is sincere, when it's real, then the universe bends towards your yes. And there's a wonderful unfolding that takes place that includes uh, possibilities, opportunities that show up that previously were unseen because your yes factor wasn't high enough. So a lot of these uh, particular uh, dimensions of saying yes will be uh, taught and discussed by various teachers from their particular perspective. It's free. You know, this, this entry into this particular summit, uh, we're giving away this particular gift on my birthday. We're giving the gift to the, the global community. And uh, so we invite everyone to go to agapelive.com and to register immediately uh, because it's a part of, of what we're doing here with Humanities Team. It's a, a wonderful collaboration setting the pace of, for, you know, conscious living to take over the planet by 2040 or, or before, you see. So uh, thank you. Thank you, Steve, for wishing me a happy birthday. And thank you for bringing up the summit. Absolutely. Hey, oh man, our pleasure. And uh, thanks for being here. We're live, everybody. So uh, Reverend Michael is coming to you from his home now in Southern California. I'm in Boulder, Colorado at the Humanities Team Studio. 
And uh, so when you go live, that means you're going to have some technical challenges sometimes. But hey, here we are, excited to be here. We've got a lot of ground to cover. Let me uh, just share, um, well, actually, first let me, let me give Michael a proper introduction here. Okay, so let me, let me just give uh, Michael a quick introduction. Michael Beckwith is one of today's most prolific spiritual leaders. He is a New Thought minister, author, and founder, and spiritual director of the Agape International Spiritual Center, a transdenominational trans community with more than 9,000 local members and 1 million friends worldwide. Michael is a close partner in, uh, with Humanity's team in our mission to, as he, as he mentioned, to make conscious living pervasive worldwide by 2040, and a project that we call PACE, Planetary Awakening Conscious Evolution, that's about picking up the pace, because we're not on a pace today for conscious living to be pervasive worldwide by 2040. That's in, a, in about 20 years. So, and we're uh, grateful for that partnership. So, a lot of exciting stuff to, uh, to talk about here today. And, and I want to mention also, Michael has partnered with us in creating a, a free a video series with Panache Desai. We're going to look at a segment here in a moment on a new master class that he created called You Are Limitless. Uh, he's a part of the Global Oneness Summit here this year. And he's got his own summit on his birthday <laughs> next week. <laughs> if you go to agapelive.com, you can register for that. End of the now celebration. Uh, summit, uh, see you, uh, say yes to you. So sounds super exciting. I wouldn't miss it. Don't, don't miss it. And I appreciate what you're saying about, about uh, uh, keeping up the pace because we do want to make conscious living pervasive. We want people to come to an understanding that they don't have to go unconscious at the will and just allow for circumstances and situations and heredity and people to determine their fate or determine their destiny. But they actually can come into a, a conscious living through spiritual practice, intentionality, and focus so that they're participating in their own evolution. You know, here, heretofore, uh, people used to think that evolution was driven primarily by external circumstances. And that was true thousands of years ago when it came to the evolution of species and plants and things of that particular nature. But at this stage of our evolution, we're at the, the apex of one stage of evolution. Uh, and, the, and the ending of another stage of evolution, now we're into conscious evolution, which means that humanity can actually change, an individual can actually change their life in one lifetime. There used to be a pervasive thought that you needed many incarnations to be on the wheel of reincarnation over and over and over again until you got it right. And that was thousands of years ago when the density of the consciousness was very thick and the earth wasn't as conscious as it is now. But now we're at a point where an individual can actually change their life for the better using one lifetime. If they're conscious, if they're available, if they're receptive, if they have sincerity, if they have focus. So we want to keep up the pace that individuals are actually choosing to live consciously across the board with, the, with the, how we deal with our environment, how we deal with the environment of our body temple, how we deal with our, the environment of our emotional body, our mental body, how we deal with the our relationships, how we deal with, you know, our day-to-day -day activities. We want to be conscious and put ourselves in a position to actually participate in our own evolution. So this is the time in history where humanity is coming to know that their own evolution is in their own hands. It's not, it's not in a God outside of themselves, nor is it just a shifting of circumstances in the world, even climate change you know, that our destiny is in our own hands. And, and everyone has a good destiny, but we have to have a, some level of conscious participation and focus in order to act, discover, activate, and ultimately express it. So as you've indicated, Steve, we're in collaboration, PACE. We're in collaboration to actually uh, inundate our global family with conscious living. And I'll say one other thing, and that is, you know, you go back 35 years ago, which is actually the date that I actually started Agape in, in November of 1986, which will be 35 years this year. And I, I was teaching a, a few years before I started Agape. But back in those days, some of the things I was teaching, you know, Oprah Winfrey called me a maverick. You know, it, it wasn't some of these some of these concepts weren't even um, 
they weren't popular as popular as they are now. So we've seen a, a gradual shift over the last 20 or 30 years where the kind of collaboration we're having with humanity's team and individuals around the world beginning to have mass meditations and uh, people are understanding the efficacy of med meditation and life visioning and affirmative prayer. So I think what we're saying is the next 20 years, let's, let's magnify what has happened slowly over the last 35 years so that this is it's not commonplace, but it's such a part of the fabric of our society that every school kid knows that they're participating in their own evolution, their own unfoldment, and, and that uh, we can make a difference in our own lifetime. So I, I appreciate the fact that you invited me to be a collaborator with you, that Agape is standing with you uh, in this, that we're standing in this together. And because uh, collaboration is actually the new sexy. Yeah, yeah, no kidding. Well, uh, you all are a pace setter uh, and uh, boy, you know, just gratitude, as you mentioned, back into the 1980s, you were out there with yeah. this. And uh, so you, you've been just this huge leader globally and uh, you've got to be smiling that we've come this far and, and still saying, hey, we got to pick up the pace where, you know, good news is I'm not a maverick anymore. Bad news is we, you know, we, we all got to do this. I, I love what you brought in, Michael where you were sharing too, where you say yes, where, where we really, and you've got with your affirmative prayer, you've got this such a beautiful process of a very pure way of opening and, and, and really uh, receiving the, all of the omnipresence, the, the power, uh, the health, the miracle power of, of the divine. Uh, and then where you just say yes in, in a pure way, you were saying, then this whole window opens up of new possibility, of new vision, of new everything, right? As we're on this conscious journey. Absolutely, where there, where there is hesitation, then you're not fully present. So oftentimes people lack the desire to say yes because they want a circumstances in the external world to change before they say yes. They, but you don't, get, you don't get, you know, as it states scripturally, signs follow change of consciousness, they don't precede. And so when you say yes, and you change your awareness, your perspective, your perception, then you start getting signs. You start getting little breadcrumbs along the way that's letting you know you're walking in the right direction. But many people are afraid to say yes until they have some kind of assurance that, that it's gonna be okay. And that means they're primarily living life from their uh, personality construct, which is afraid of the unknown and afraid of being out in new territory. And so it holds very fast to the known and all of the ways that we protect ourselves in the known. But when there's an unadulterated, yes, yes, I am. Yes, I can. Yes, I'm willing. Yes, I'm able, you know, to take the next step, to embrace the next level of my, my unfoldment, the next great vision and version of myself. Signs follow. We become available to inspired wisdom through our intuition and through our direct knowing, we're guided. And even though physically we can't see the evidence, we start to develop our intuitive and direct knowing faculties that let us know that we're not walking alone. We're not, we may be on a pathless path, a path that we personally never have tread before, but we're standing upon the vibrational shoulders of so many who have said yes to themselves and inundated the newest sphere, the mental atmosphere of the planet with great possibility. And so we're, we're inviting people to really leap before you look. <laughs> leap, <laughs> say yes, and then watch what unfolds. <laughs> Absolutely, trust the unseen world. And I know viewers, this is a conscious audience, so we all have this going on, but it's, it's a journey and there, I don't know, I don't think there's any there there. So, you just keep climbing uh, as we trust, as we, as we have faith, as we, uh, and, and as you mentioned, it, it's, it's not that challenging because the, the gifts, the worldview, the prosperity, I, sometimes I call it the boomerang effect that's coming back, that's supporting the conscious journey, just makes it, uh, uh, ha, allows us to understand we are absolutely on the right path. Doors are opening. 
uh, and right. the doors to un unhealthy living are, in, are closing as we want them to. But uh, it's a beautiful right. path. And thank you for uh, describing it so well. I love that science dimension of, of course, you know, science affirms that we've got to do this to achieve this. It's not the other way around. So we, we got to trust the unseen world, which as you share uh, so frequently. Let me um, just real quick say a few things. Um, first, I want to close off. We were talking about Noah came in, uh, who's a partner. He's, uh, he came in live from Oregon there, Michael, just before you came on. And we were talking about conscious business and uh, Michael is in this, uh, in this uh, free program series. He also is faculty in this whole conscious business change agent program. Uh, and as uh, Noah mentioned, what, there, there are many things that Michael shares in his program, but one of the most profound is, is it's not a business with a mission. It's a mission with a business, uh, so, uh, which is so important. It, and it's what we naturally do in conscious living. We don't ever turn it around, do we, Michael? Right. It's always, uh, our mission is leading us everywhere. Right, that's, that's the next stage of human evolution. Uh, in, uh, in, the, in the old stage, where the survival instinct was overriding everything, profit was the only motive. It wasn't the quality, necessarily the quality of whatever was being sold. It wasn't necessarily taking care of the planet. It wasn't necessarily taking care of the individuals that were on staff that was building whatever they, they were building. Profit, profit drove everything. And the mission was profit. But at this particular stage in our unfoldment, you know, I teach that we have to have a, a mission and then our business is formed around that particular mission. So as you know, Steve, I, I teach that there are four bottom lines. Obviously profit is a bottom line. You have to have a level of financial circulation to stay in business, but you have to have a purpose. The purpose, that's, that's the mission you're talking about. You have to have a higher purpose for your business. How is this gonna assist humanity in living better, you see? So it has to be purpose driven, then there's profit, then there's people. How is this, how is this, uh, assisting people on the planet and how is this assisting the planet so those are four p's purpose profit people and planet and what happens is because the vibration of the earth is at a much higher level at this particular time it's going to support businesses that are in tune with this highest frequency it's not going to necessarily support individuals that are just going out just to make money it's going gonna, it's gonna to support individuals who are in the course of making money, are serving the planet, serving the people, and are living with a higher purpose. So, you know, it, one of the, so, so I, I try to bring that into focus for our, our entrepreneurial individuals. And, and in that same teaching, I'll also mention that there's success 1.0, success 2.0, success 3.0. Success 1.0 is... You know, I get rich, period, end of story. Success 2.0 is I get rich and I become more philanthropic. I, I become a philanthropist. I, I give back to the community. I support spiritual communities and charities and particular businesses and particular focuses that I want to, that, that are serving the kind of world I want to live in. That's success 2.0. It's a little bit higher frequency than success 1.0. Then there's success 3.0. Success 3.0 is built into the business model and into the, the business plan is my give back. So as I'm building my business, I have the places in the world that I'm serving, even if it's not that much in the beginning, but it's built into the program so that as I become more successful, I'm able to give more rather than trying to wait until I'm rich to give because what happens is oftentimes people will make a lot of money and then they'll try to give money, but they, they become so identified with money that they actually think they're losing something when they support something. But if you build it into your habit from the beginning, it just you become so overjoyed when you're able to support and to give to places that are making the world better. I mean, Agape, we, we support other organizations financially, other organizations that do things that we don't do. So we can't do it all. So we support other, we support organizations and we're a nonprofit. We're not even, you know, a for-profit organization, 
but we support organizations that are dealing with um, in the uh, women who were uh, formerly uh, sex slaves. Uh, we deal with organizations that are dealing with planting trees. We deal with organizations that are that are helping uh, empowering women. We deal with organizations that are, are powering our youth. But it's built in, it's built it's 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 built into our budget. You see, so that we don't we don't wait till we get a big windfall and then do it. It's just built into the budget. So that, that's success 3.0 that we're inviting conscious entrepreneurs to be about. And I think if they start, if they just gave $10 somewhere in the beginning and then built it up to 20 and 100 and 1,000, they would probably see their business flourish at a much faster rate. <laughs> yes, they would. There's this, the, uh, this is that uh, scientific principle or the boomerang effect. Beautiful, Michael. Yes, yeah, success 3.0, that's when we talk about making conscious living pervasive worldwide by 2040. Yeah. That's what business is doing. It's all in business 3.0. And the, and the interesting thing is, is when we be, as we become conscious, as we're doing all these things Michael is talking about, as we, I'll call it walk through that door, as we become, we become transformed. And as we become transformed, I don't think we even know how to do anything but business 3.0. Mm -hmm. That's really who we become. Um, and I, I just as we close this off, because there's so many... Uh, fun and important things we want to get to here during the hour. Again, this is called Take Your Place at the Leading Edge of Business, Conscious Business Practices that Advance Your Reach and Impact. And uh, I think we're gonna, we're, we've are we been putting on the display a link to take that uh, hour-long program. Michael is a part of it. You can also go to the humanitiesteam.org website and scroll down and you'll see that uh, a link that you can click on to watch that program which talks all about conscious business and uh, michael uh bernard beckwith ken wilbur uh andrew harvey uh, uh barbara marks hubbard myself uh there there are many people that are talking about conscious business during that uh, program so let me um segue to some other things i want to share there are people that are shouting out to uh, michael here for his birthday vance is coming in and saying hey happy birthday michael and he's saying uh uh, leap, leap, uh, leap the love leap. <laughs> okay. So be the, be cause. So you've got a friend there, Vance, shouting out to you, Michael. Joe, uh, Cammy is saying, it's exciting to hear more about this whole conscious business thing. And she said, she's a part of a, uh, of a B Corp, which is fantastic, Joe. Thanks for writing in. And then Patricia Wagner's writing in, uh, and saying, uh, conscious business, purpose, profit, people, planet. Thank you, Michael. So, uh, hey, thank you all for shouting out to us. We'll get to your comments here during the hour. I want to page over to, I mentioned at the beginning, Michael and Panash Desai created uh, programs with Humanities Team. They created a free program called uh, uh, Living a Masterful Life. Uh, and, and Michael has a 60-minute segment, and then their, Panash Desai has a 60-minute segment. We're going to cut away right now to a two-and-a-half-minute segment and then Michael and I'll come back and talk about it. Our essential self uh, never experience uh, loneliness or despair. That again is on the personality level. It's on the human consciousness level. However, you put a part of the answer in the question when one begins to walk in the direction of service or creativity, begins to walk in the direction of generosity, just baby steps, there's an energy that's released that becomes activated in our awareness and we begin to transmute the thoughts of loneliness, despair, sadness, etc., into a higher frequency. Creativity begins to flow. Um, a level of joy begins to flow because it's within our matrix as a being where we have to get it jump started. Now, in some spiritual traditions, this is an example. In some spiritual traditions, let's say an individual loses a loved one, a very close loved one, friend, family member. And of course, the grieving is there, the sadness is there, the loneliness is there. In certain spiritual traditions, it is okay to grieve for 30 days, or excuse me, 40 days, and on the 41st day, you dedicate yourself to some kind of project, 
some kind of way of living that's in honor of the person that you lost. So that the energy starts to shift from, I miss the person, why did they die? I'm lonely, they left me alone, I'm in despair, to what can I now do in their memory to make myself a better individual or to make the world a better place? Now, the moment I begin to do that, the energy shifts and the grieving, sad, loneliness thoughts begin to be redeemed. It's called redemption. When you, we all know redemption. You know, remember years ago, people used to redeem their bottles for five cents or something, you know, but there's a redemption of thought because energy is never created or destroyed. It's just transmuted. So you're redeeming the thoughts of despair and loneliness and transmuting them to a higher frequency by going into service, by um, dedicating your life to being better or a project on behalf of that individual. Fantastic. So that's, uh, again, that's a video series, Living a Masterful Life. Michael Beckwith, Panash Desai, the humanities team created that. We're going to put a link in the window. And also, if you go to humanitiesteam.org, up at the top left, you'll see master, a master class uh, on the navigation and just pull down the free courses. You come down to the sixth program, and that's Living a Masterful Life. It's, uh, you can register for free there to go through that uh, really fantastic program that Michael and Panash Desai created. Um, that was, uh, I, I love what you shared in that clip, Michael. Uh, boy, because there's so much uh, in today's world, even there's just a lot of grieving, a lot of sadness. People are leaving jobs, you know, and you're talking about how to turn that around. Absolutely. What happens is people operate, uh, they, they, they deal with that kind of stress uh, two different ways. One, an individual can become depressed with the energy is going in and there's sullenness and then there's a constant rumination of the thought forms of lack or loss or scarcity or sadness. It's just a, a constant, what is called mentation, a constant reliving the same thoughts over and over and over again. And then there's um, frantic activity where individuals are very outwardly bound running from those feelings. So they'll do a lot of things and, and try to get something exogenous, something outside of themselves to keep them from feeling those things, whether it's alcohol, whether it's overeating, whether it's over busyness, et cetera. And so individuals opt, opt between one of those two things. And what, what you just showed was me sharing that instead of allowing the energy to become depressed, if somebody dies in that particular example, you, you're able to be in that for 40 days. And then on the 41st day, you find it instead of a depression, an expression, but an expression with meaning. It's not just being out there in busyness with hanging out with people and, and trying not to be lonely because everyone knows you can be lonely in a crowd. It's actually dedicating a project, some level of service. You know, I was thinking about um, a, a Lee Brown who, who, who's here. And she, I remember one time she showed, shared with me that when her mother passed at a very young age, and her mother was a very beautiful, altruistic being, she started working at a, a soup kitchen in honor of her mother because that was, um, that was not only keeping her mother's memory alive, but it was a different energy of being able to participate uh, with the grief to actually transmute the energy. And so uh, that, that's a way of turning the depression into expression. Another way is instead of running out and being busy or having a loop of the sad thoughts. Uh, and you have to walk through this door by yourself. You have to actually uh, go in and seek to have a moment of transcendence. And that's where prayer comes in. That's where meditation comes in. And that's where life visioning comes in, where you actually are becoming more identified with the aspect of you that it's not suffering loss. Now we don't, we're not, uh, it's, you know, it's covering up the fact that something bad has happened, you know, according to the personality construct, but we're opening ourselves up to make contact or have an encounter with the transcendent. And even on a broader scale, what you're talking about in terms of pace, in terms of making conscious living, you know, 
inundating the society with that, we both know that every problem is mental or emotional or physical, but every single solution is spiritual. You see, we know that. Now, there are people, science is finally catching up to that awareness, you see, so that when, when one seeks to uh, come into a moment of prayer, a moment of having an encounter, they're actually going to the place where all the solutions are, where the answers are a- across the board. So in that particular example, yes, you know, we find a way to dedicate our life and, and, and to free the circular, circular energy of, of, of grieving into an expression of something good, but we're not out there frantic trying to run away from, from, the, from the depth of that, of that emotion. So that what happens is the emotion does get transmuted. It comes, it goes from one frequency to another without denying the loss or whatever it is that took place in one's life. And today, as you said earlier, there's many things that are pervasive in our society that can allow people to go down that path. You can look at the polarity in our political structure. You can look at the we against them consciousness that has become pervasive when you watch the news. You can look at the, the, the virus of fear that has swept the nation on many things. You, you can go coronavirus. You can go to the environmental uh, uh, aspects of our community, the pollution of human beings, of how they're polluting the environment, the, 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 the strip mining of the planet, the, 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 the destruction of the rainforest. There's so many things that you can place your attention on and go down that cycle. And there's a solution to all of that but it does begin with an expansion of awareness. Yes, it does. Wow, beautiful, Michael. I could listen to you talk all day. <laughs> I'm sure I'm, uh, I'm, few, I'm sure viewers are, are uh, ex- in fact, they've been on screen expressing, expressing appreciation. Thank you, just beautiful. I love, you know, you've got these little zingers too. Instead of depression, expression. Uh, just yeah. beautiful little zingers there. Barbara Marks Hubbard used to do that kind of thing. Too, and I know she well, was know, a good friend of yours. I, I worked, Barbara and I were very close. We were on the board of the INTA for years, and we would go into the vision process, and her and I would go into revelry for a long period of time, just really seeking to articulate the next state of vision for humanity. And she, we were very close. Uh, so every time you mention her name, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a. Even though she's physically gone, when you mention her name, it's like a really sweet spot in me where she is concerned <laughs> because she never lost, she never ever lost her innocent, great, conscious, innocent naivete about the possibility for humanity, regardless of what was going on on the planet at that particular time. Whether it was when, when she was alive, you know, there was the Iraq war and the this destruction of, of lives and, and so much. There was all much, so many things going on. And she never lost that innocent awareness that, you know what? We can turn this around. We can actually be captured by a vision. We can actually uh, uh, change it. And one thing we agreed upon was the fact that if we could shine a, if we could have a big enough mirror for us to look in and see all the good that was happening on the planet, you know, it would radically shift the consciousness of the planet right now we're getting the feedback we get uh, from the, uh, the, the, the global brain and the, the news outlets is what does, what's not working on the planet, the negativity. But if we could have a moment in which humanity could actually see its potential, its possibility, and all the good that's taking place, oh my God, there'd be a radical shift. And we would talk about that for hours, you know, yeah. seeking to do that kind of thing, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, she is beautiful and very, still very much a part of the humanities team family with her master classes and things. And uh, and of course, she would say, "Our crisis is a birth." So it was like, "It's time to sell it." You know, we're in crisis. You know, but uh, look what we're giving birth to, and the birth has already happened, and the baby's growing up. And let's the, so when we're talking about making conscious living pervasive by 2040, this is just a continuation of that story that Barbara shared her whole life. So, and yeah. a beautiful story at that. Uh, well, let me share now. Um, so we watched a little clip from this uh, Living a Masterful Life. Now, that led into then a masterclass that uh, Michael created with Panache Desai and Humanities team. It's called You Are Limitless. 
uh, which is an amazing masterclass, even now as uh, Michael is just talking, you know, just streaming consciousness, you're, all of these wisdom uh, tidbits. And his, this masterclass is filled with wisdom from both Michael and Panache. We're gonna go to a segment that's about five minutes and we're gonna come back and talk, talk a little bit about it here. Let me tell you a story. I was in Costa Rica a few years ago. I go there a couple of times a year to, to teach at a, at a resort there called Rhythmia. So my daughter and I were at the beach. We were the, matter of fact, we were the only ones on the beach. There was no one else on the beach but us two. So I went swimming into the ocean. I love to go swimming, particularly outside of the United States because the water is generally more refreshing and uh, less polluted than it is in the States. Unbeknownst to me, I drifted out extremely far. And when I turned around, my daughter was like a little ant on the beach. That didn't bother me because I'm a great swimmer. But when I started to swim inward, I was caught in a riptide. I couldn't get in. And so I know that when you're in a riptide, you kind of swim to the side in order to get out of the riptide. But in Costa Rica, there was like two opposing riptides. And so when I started to swim to the side, I was still caught in a riptide. So I couldn't move. And I was trying to get in, but I could not get in. And my body temple was becoming more and more exhausted. I was becoming tired. And I can remember my daughter being very intuit intuitive, knew something was wrong because she saw me trying to get in and I couldn't get in. There was nothing that she could do because there was no one on the beach to assist. So I can remember going underwater a couple of times <clears throat> gagging a little bit, swallowing water, and then bobbling back up, treading water, trying to get in. And I pick up a lot of information through dreams, a lot of a prophecy through dreams. So I scanned my mind to see, did I have a dream of death? Did I have a dream that this could possibly be my last day on the planet? And as I scanned my mind, I, I didn't have such a dream. I didn't, this was not my last day. And as I went under one time, I remember thinking, if I don't make it in, there's going to be a lot of upset people in my life. I, I better get in. I, I remember thinking that. I, but I, I understand I, it's difficult to convey how tired the body was. I was exhausted. Okay? And so when I popped up, first thing I did, once I popped up for this last time and started breathing, I programmed my mind. I said to my mind, Regardless of how tired the body gets, do not give up. I did a program. Regardless of how tired the body gets, do not give up. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. I programmed the mind. And then what came out of my mouth was help. Now, the first help was not conscious. It just came out of my mouth. I just noticed that something in me said help. Now, there was no one out there to help me. I said, help. And then once that came out of my mouth, I embraced that. And I began to say, help. I said, to, I said, I need some help here. I need some help here. I need some help. I programmed the mind and I said, I need some help. As I'm treading water, a wave comes in that gives me a little momentum. Second wave comes in, gives me more momentum. Another moment later, a third wave comes in, gives me more momentum. Now I have momentum. I'm exhausted. But the mind was programmed. Regardless of how tired the body gets, keep going. So in my exhaustion, I'm going. My mind is programmed. Regardless of how tired the body gets, keep going. Keep going. I need some help here. I'm available to help. I'm available for help. Keep going. Keep going. I'm available for help. I'm available for help. Then after what seemed like a long period of time, I start to get in. And there was a moment where I could, my feet touched the sand underneath. And then I kept going and kept going. Finally, I was on the beach. I collapsed on the beach. I turned on my back. My heart was beating extremely fast. I was breathing. But I felt so good. 
that I survived that particular encounter. Oh, boy, that is a story, Michael. Hey, I, I relived story. it. I relived it myself. I remember uh, the exhaustion. I remember going underwater. I remember the whole thing. And, uh, and, and the, 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 the other part of that story is that when I came back to Los Angeles, there's a, a good friend of ours that's a, a medium. Her name is Alicia Killebrew. And uh, I was just telling her the story about what happened. And then she said, well, do you mind if I look at it? Look at it. I said, sure, go ahead. What do you see? And she said, uh, you said help. You said, I need some help here. I said, yes. She said, when you said that, an archangel responded and gave you three waves to get in. And that assisted you in. And then she reminded me, she said, um, you know, they can't intervene unless you ask for help. The ancestors or the angels can't intervene. And so that's the, that's the second part of the story. It's like when you ask for help, now you're receptive, you're available, you're open, not only to fresh insights and revelations, but you're open uh, to uh, the angelic kingdom as well that can't intervene into your life unless there is some level of asking. Not, it's not beseeching a reluctant deity. It's just being available. And you know what came out of my mouth was a help, and then it was, I need some help here. And, uh, and that's definitely a, a part of my spiritual practice. I, 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 I pray, I affirm the truth, and I ask for help. I ask for help to complete my assignment of the day. I ask for help and, and come in, in, in league with the great assistance that's everywhere for the asking. Ask, and you shall receive, you see. So that's that, 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 uh, that story. I relived it all again just watching myself. Yeah, such an important um, story, and and thank you for bringing that in. And when we, and of course, you share we're all emanations of the divine, which which we are. We're there's there is one presence. The scientists call it the Big Bang. Uh, spirituality calls it something different. We're we're talking about the same thing, but but uh, we're, what you're bringing in is that, it, and we we actually came into this earlier too. It's not just the visible world. In the invisible world, there's resources everywhere angels, archangels, the divine herself, uh, on and on. And, uh, uh, and that those resources are here to offer assistance if we believe in them and call on them and believe that they're, they're responding as they do. So uh, such an important thing to bring in here. Yeah, especially now when I think a lot of people need help and, and we can ask for help. And most of the most of the goodies are in the invisible, the realm of the invisible. In the invisible is infinite possibility, uh, infinite opportunities. I mean, the, the presence itself, by whatever name you want to call the presence, I, I, I sometimes say the presence that's never an absence is invisible. And uh, you can see the evidence of the presence, but the presence is timeless and formless. And and then and then ideas and inspirations are timeless and formless. When a composer uh, catches music from the spheres, that's invisible, timeless, and inaudible, but they catch it. You know, Beethoven, who was deaf, never heard a note in his life, would catch the invisible, inaudible music of the spheres and do complete symphonies. So when we talk about the realm of the invisible, we're talking about where the real stuff is. And then it becomes visible. It condenses itself as experience. It condenses itself as form and things of that particular nature. But we really want in individuals to know to have a relationship with the invisible. And that's why mystics for centuries have prayed and meditated because they knew going into the realm of the invisible was very potent and more potent than what you can taste and touch and see and smell and hear. It's the spiritual faculty of seeing the invisible and hearing the inaudible that allows for even the next stage of our own unfoldment to happen. Pretty much all the great inventions, great music, great choreography, great architecture has come from somebody having an insight beyond time and space, 
you're catching something and then bringing it back. That's, and, and, and that's what a shaman does, goes into the infinite and brings it back to the community. So we're, if we're gonna be conscious living, we're inviting ourselves to be urban shaman if we live in urban conditions, to actually practice going into the realm of the invisible and then coming back with fresh insight, fresh revelation, fresh inspiration, and bring it, in, bring it, bring it to earth. The figuring out mind uh, is not as valuable as the part of us that can go into the realm of the invisible and catch insight. And you know, most people forget. You know, they'll, they'll speak about Albert Einstein's intellect, but they forget that the E equal MC squared formula came from a lucid dream that he had when he was out of time and space and he caught this, this relativity as he was writing something. And then when he woke up, he brought it back into this space and began to work on it. It wasn't that he was figuring out with his intellect equal MC squared, even though he figured, he thought there was a unified field it was the dream state and the transcendent state that allowed him to catch it. Same is true for George Washington Carver. People think of him as the man who dissected the peanut and brought about all these healing modalities from the peanut and from plants and from the clay and the ground. But people, many people don't realize that he was one of the greatest mystics to walk the planet. He would wake up at four o'clock in the morning and meditate. And then Mother Nature would share with him her secrets. And one of the things he said is, if you fall in love with something deep enough, it will reveal its secrets to you. And he would fall in love with the plant. He'd fall in love with the soil. He would fall in love with the peanut. And then it would share the efficacy of its nature. Then he would go into his laboratory and prove it. It wasn't the other way around. It wasn't, I'm going to go into the laboratory and figure out the, the nature of the peanut. It was revealed to him in meditation. And then he proved it in the laboratory. And so when we speak about the invisible, science is now catching up to the fact that when you dissect, dissect something to its nth degree, you can't go any further in that highly, that high uh, microscope. You discover there's nothing there but an energetic pattern of information that's invisible but real. That energetic pattern we're, we all are an energetic pattern of infinite potential, unique expressions of the infinite. There's an energetic pattern in an avocado seed that contains the avocado tree. There's an energetic pattern in an acorn. I mean, old science would take the acorn and dissect it and look inside of it and tell me its constituent parts, but it would kill the oak tree in the process. Inside of that acorn, there is an oak tree. The energetic pattern exists. What do we do? We plant it in the right conditions. And then the oak tree, the, sh the roots, and then the shoots. And then ultimately, there's an oak tree there, you see. And so science is finally catching up to the fact that in this quantum field, and there are original ideas and energetic patterns that when the condition is right, they will emerge. They will emerge. So the yes, invisible they is, will. is <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, uh, so true. And and this whole we talk about making conscious living pervasive worldwide by 2040 and picking up the pace. It is happening already. Uh, and uh, boy, you're bringing in just such beautiful wisdom here. That uh, since the mid 1980s, you've been out in the world first as a maverick, and now it's getting mainstreamed. So uh, Ray. Michael, let me share. So this program this, that, that was created again, it was Michael Panash Desai Humanities Team created this program called You Are Limitless. And it's part of the Humanity Stream Plus platform. So uh, this mission to make, make conscious living pervasive worldwide by 2040, and then pace, picking up the pace, planetary awakening and conscious evolution. Uh, the, the Humanity Stream Plus actually ties to that. This is this platform that we created that You Are Limitless is on. So uh, this Humanity Stream Plus platform, it, it is the strategy that's delivering on the mission. Uh, where it's a big mission, a big lift to say that by 2040 in 19 years, conscious living 
is going to be pervasive worldwide. Now, how is that going to happen? And it's going to happen by leaders all over the world, Michael uh, and, and uh, many others, humanities team, you, viewers. It's probably why you're here with us today. You're part of that. But uh, what Humanity Stream Plus is this intuitive graphical interface that uh, the, we've got a picture of it there on the screen. We're going to also give you a web address so you can go see it. It's groundbreaking because in the transformational education industry, everybody's using something that is kind of clunky. Uh, it allows you to, uh, to download your programs and go from program to program and then even another masterclass. But it's challenging to get around. This platform that we're using was, is groundbreaking. There's not anything else like it in the industry. It's like when you're streaming movies, uh, this would be like Netflix or Amazon Prime. It's that easy, the interface you can see if each of these masterclasses, one of those that we just passed was You Are Limitless. Now, if you clicked on that, you are, there it is right there, You Are Limitless, you see Michael's face and Panache's. Now, when you click on that, all of the modules then become visible with a little synopsis of each module. Uh, and there's a seven day free trial on this program. So you could even, if you wanna get familiar with Michael's program, you can go to this web address uh, do a seven-day free trial and check out Michael's program and these others. Right now, there are 12 uh, master classes. There are 14 other transformational education programs. There's almost 600 hours of viewing, and we're adding viewing every, uh, every week. Now, we call it Humanity Stream Plus because it's not only what's on the site here. There are other things as well. Uh, there's live mentoring. As these new programs are launched, you're invited to all of the live mentoring programs. Uh, just around the corner, there's one with Catherine Woodward Thomas and Dr. Laura Berman. This is the next one coming up. And then a, another program after that with uh, Nassim Harriman and Greg Braden. You're invited to these live programs. There's a, a free completion certificate. So if on your resume or CV, you wanna share, you've been through You Are Limitless uh, and have spiritual training, you can share that. There's a completion certificate you get when you complete. The program, all of the programs have a free completion certificate. Global Oneness Summit gets bigger each year. Uh, this year, it's nine days. Michael and Panash Desai are on a panel. Um, there are a lot of people like to buy the upgrade that's $197 uh, that includes a free viewing of all of the, of the Global Oneness Summit. That's $197 and that's free as part of Humanity Stream Plus. So we put Everything, all of these master classes, all of this education, global oneness summits, conscious living programs, all of these things and other things I'm talking about into this packaging that's $4.97 a year. And we're just going to keep bringing that price down, down, down and extending it out to every region, to every community around the world, eventually in every language. Uh, so when we talk about then making conscious living pervasive worldwide by 2040, there's a lot involved in that. And becoming limitless is part of it. Uh, healing trauma with Thomas Hubel and Joan Borisenko, that's another part of it. Uh, becoming a conscious leader, with, and there's a master class on that, is another part of it. So uh, this is how we plan to deliver working with our partners like Michael on making conscious living pervasive worldwide by 2040 by just creating master classes and educational programs and all of these different facets and dimensions of what conscious living is and then making it affordable on a graphical intuitive interface where there's a free trial and guarantees, uh, the normal guarantees even after you purchase the product for a period of time. So that in your home, uh, all of what conscious living is is brought into the home and you can share it with your family and your coworkers and then you're out in the world. So I uh, invite you to check that out, Humanity Stream Plus. Uh, check out the You Are Limitless program that Michael and Panache created. It's astounding. Uh, you'll, uh, with a seven day free trial, you could really get in and, and uh, see a lot of what is inside there. As I mentioned just a moment ago, talking with Michael, uh, there's just, even when he's just sitting here talking, there's so many <laughs> pearls of wisdom. He's just peeling off one after the other after the other. So imagine where he put, uh, the time into creating this program with Panache, what is, what is in it. And, and Panache Desai is amazing too. He's a good friend of Michael's and a good friend of humanity's team. So, so check that out. Let me come back to uh, Michael and just share here again, his Michael's birthday is Wednesday next week. 
And as part of his birthday celebration, he's got this amazing summit that you don't want to miss. Uh, the summit is called End of the Now <laughs> Celebration Summit and uh, Say Yes to You. Uh, and if you go to agapelive.com, you can register for free for the summit. It's next week. Uh, and uh, Michael, we're, we're just uh, so grateful to have you here with us here today. And the summit is amazing. Everybody should sign up for that summit next week. It's a free summit. You, you, if you want to say yes to your life, you might as well sign up because some of the teachers, you may not, you know who Don Miguel is, you know who Neil Donald Walsh is, but you may not know who Daniel Laporte is. You may not know who Queen Afua is, and they bring some very powerful nuggets, very far, powerful insights and, 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 and revelations that come through their particular matrix, their particular point of view. When you put all four of them together, including myself, it's gonna be a nice talk and nice dialogue. We're gonna go into dialogue together and have conversation about uh, what has emerged through each individual's presentation. You know, Shaman Durek's gonna be giving us like a, an opening uh, blessing. We're gonna have a Coyle Webb doing a very, very powerful breath work. There's, there's some wonderful things. I don't want to give it all away, but we've decided on my birthday to give. And this is a, a, a gift to the global community uh, for anyone to, to sign up. And you can really get some wonderful nuggets and some ways of practicing, giving yourself permission for you to emerge. Remember what we said at the top of the hour here, that you are the only one that can give yourself permission to become the next great vision and version of yourself. People can encourage you, they can pray for you, they can coach you, you can emulate uh, uh, excellence to a degree, but ultimately you have to walk through that door yourself. And, the, and, the, and the, one of the passwords to the door of excellence is I say yes to me. That's one of the great passwords, you have to say yes to yourself. And then you discover so many things you're looking for start to show up along the way that many times have been there all along, but your perception blocked it because you were in your no or your maybe or what wait and see, maybe one day. Well, there's no such day as one day on your calendar. And there's no such day as someday on the calendar. Today, sign up. Do it today. Sign up for this magnificent summit. Yes, and it is being held on Wednesday, July 21st, which was the day my mother, Alice G. Beckwith, gave birth to Michael B. Beckwith. So it's, it's her birthday and my appearance day, my Earth Day. And uh, so we're celebrating the community, uh, Board of Trustees and everybody, the staff and special team has put together, has, has done a fantastic job of, of, of curating teachers, of, of so much that goes in. As you know, Steve, goes into, goes, so much goes into what we're doing right here and right now. And so take advantage of it. Uh, go to agapelive.com and uh, sign up for the, uh, the summit. You'll, you'll, there's some bonus Bonuses in there too, you'll probably want to participate in. In fact, I know you will. <laughs> All of us in the humanities team, we're in. We, we are signing up today here, Michael. So I, I'm gonna sign up as soon as we come off this program. Yeah, sounds like an amazing summit. And, uh, and thank you, you know, for your many contributions to the world. You, you were one in this early. Uh, I, you know, when, when we started humanities team in 2003, and we talked about awakening oneness in the world, which is conscious living. People looked at us cross-eyed. That was 2003. So in 1987, I can promise you, <laughs> when Michael was out with these conscious living concepts, this was not easy. So, you know, he is a true pace setter. When we talk about our mission to make conscious living pervasive worldwide by 2040, Michael has been a pace setter out there for decades. And now there are a lot of people running alongside him and hooray. Uh, but let's uh, let's just up level our game, up level our life. You know, say yes in a more pure way, and uh, and then you know, of course, there's nothing but benefits that come back. There's no sacrifice as we do 
It just gets better and better and better. Right. That word sacrifice actually means to make sacred. That is, that is the meaning of sacrifice, to make something sacred. And so we're making sacred our time. You know, time is very valuable. I mean, it's, a, it's obviously it's a mental construct it doesn't really exist. But in the terms of the, the three dimensional experience, we're sacrificing. We're making our time sacred by participating in in this moment right now in which we're together. And uh, when you sign up for the summit, you're, you're, you're giving your time You're making it sacred for the unfoldment of your own soul. And as you mentioned, you know, back in 1986 and even before, you know, there, there were moments where I was actually hated and reviled, you know, by the traditional churches uh, saying that I was sending people to hell by telling them that God was within them, you know, and that God could operate through them. Uh, and, and, and I'm, not saying, I'm not saying I was the only one saying that. I'm just saying that in my experience, I was reviled and hated by many people from, the, from our, our, our traditional brothers and sisters who are also now catching up to the, to the awareness that this presence that is everywhere, um, that we're involved in it some way, that our life is an emanation of it. And so I, I don't think that anyone walks unscathed when they make a choice for excellence in their life. There'll be a part of themselves that sabotages themselves because of afraid of the unknown. And that might be reflected by individuals in the world who are saying that what you're doing is crazy. What you're doing is impossible. That doesn't make sense. Go get a regular job, <laughs> you know, whatever the case may be. But once we say yes to ourselves authentically, sincerely, the entire universe moves to support us. You see, And so we really want to embrace that truth. Amen and amen. Yeah, Michael, uh, thank you for working us in because I'm, I'm sure with your birthday and the summit next Wednesday, and then you've got your regular Agape Sunday programs, you guys must be just swimming and things to do. So thank you for uh, working us in here. Looking forward to your summit next week. Thank you for being the pace setter that you are and this partner in uh, making conscious living pervasive worldwide by 2040 and being a pace setter. We need pace setters that have been out there running, you know, for decades and uh, that are saying, come on in, you know, join the run. <laughs> Let's do this together. And, uh, and, and you're out there extending a wonderful, powerful invitation. Thank you, brother. <laughs> and as Thank you say, you peace and blessings. <laughs> peace and blessings. Thank you for the invitation. And remember that old, old scripture, the race is not given to he or she who swiftest or fleetest of foot, but to the ones who endure to the end. We, see, we've got endurance, and we're going to make we're going to bring something into the expression before 2040 at an even higher level. So, thank you, thank you for asking me to be a part of, part of this. Day. Oh man, thank you. Yeah, you are a true mentor, Michael. Truly, you know, you you are a true mentor. Thank you for being with us. Uh, such a pleasure. And uh, so, so love, hugs, peace and blessings to you and all the Agape community, to Lee Hill, who uh, helped put this uh, together. And uh, we'll be with you next week. And Neil Donald Walsh is there with Michael. And, and as Michael mentioned, many of these other uh, incredible people that are part of the summit on Wednesday. Looking forward. Okay, take care, everybody. I think Neil is with us live, I think, next week. So uh, look, join us next week for a celebration. And uh, thanks, Michael. Happy birthday. Thank you so much. God bless you all. Okay. God bless you. Look forward to being with you again soon. Take care. <laughs>